Today on the Sansu Show, take a look. It's for you. It's Sansu. Hello everyone, welcome to the Sansu Show. Today we're gonna to be blessed because we're gonna have a gospel singer, a songwriter. He's also a music teacher. He's also a producer. Please help me welcome Maestro Kevin Peabody. How you doing, Kevin? Doing fine, Susie. How are you today? <laughs> oh, fine. Thank you. So I've known you for a long time now, and I know yes. you're from East St. Louis, Illinois. Right? That's correct. Yes. I come from and the land of Lincoln, like Obama. <laughs> yes, I miss a president. I miss him so much. Yes. But anyway, so what made you move to California? Uh, I moved to California because I was tired of the cold weather. Uh, mm -hmm. I moved uh, in 1980 to San Francisco. Uh -huh. And after the blizzard of 1978, uh, I just had it with cold weather. And there were a lot of musicians and a lot of artists who lived in uh, on the East Coast and in the Midwest who decided to come to California. Oh, what interests you to be in the uh, gospel music? Well, I've been in the gospel music uh, industry for uh, all of my life. Uh, I started at five working with uh, the children's choir and you know, oh, wow. hand waving the children's choir. And mm -hmm. then I moved to the youth choir. And uh, I came from a church that had a broadcast. And there were many, many gospel greats who came to our church for the broadcast on Sunday evenings. So I had an opportunity to uh, glean uh, what those gospel artists did. And, and I loved it. I simply loved, loved it. Oh, to give a little credit, uh, uh, you include Edwin Hawkins, Bobby Jones, Emmett Powell. Is this anybody else that you want to work with from the gospel field? Well, I've worked with uh, uh, probably all of the major gospel artists. There are a few that I haven't worked with. I haven't worked with mm -hmm. Kirk Franklin and some of the uh, more contemporary artists who are on the scene now uh, who are in their 20s. I would like to at least uh, uh, shoot some songs to them. Yes, because they need inspiration and guidance, actually. Because, Absolutely. You know, Mentors are very important. Uh -huh. That's yeah, one thing that our company does. Yeah, because the gospel industry right now, or the gospel music, changed a lot, right? Absolutely. From the old Absolutely. generation, the traditional one, and then now it's more like a rock, uh, uh, rap kind of thing. So are right. you into that? Has, uh, yes. Hip hop has played a, a major influence in mm -hmm. gospel. And uh, if you really are a fan of gospel and you uh -huh. listen to gospel from its uh -huh. early impetus, say the 1930s all the way up until now, you'll discover that it always changed. Yes. Uh, and the biggest changes uh -huh. were during the contemporary era uh -huh. with the Reverend James Cleveland and Edwin Hawkins, who we give credit as being the foundation for what we consider contemporary gospel music today. So what kind of gospel music do you, are you into? Into the traditional one or more into the modern gospel uh, uh, music? Uh, I've, I've worked both ends. I've worked the uh, traditional aspect of gospel music. Uh -huh. uh, it's particularly liked in European, company, in Euro uh -huh. European countries. And I've also done the contemporary aspect of it. Um, I have a, I play jazz, uh, oh. rock. I oh. play other genres as well. Oh, okay. So I, I probably say I have a rich blend of, of musical influences. Oh, okay. But such that um, the gospel music, live music is a very important a uh, process in, in the gospel services. So yes. since we have this pandemic, how are you still joining, joining the live? Well, or is it still live now or? Well, no I haven't more, done a service since the uh, pandemic, since uh -huh. March. And uh -huh. what I've 
done is uh, produced a new project. Uh -huh. uh, instead of uh, our churches have been closed down for the since March. Yeah. So there, there has been a lack of work. So what I did was uh, the musicians that I work with on a uh -huh. weekly basis, I threw a project in their lap and oh. uh, paid them for it. And, you know, to generate so they could generate income during the pandemic. But I've been perfectly fine. Uh, uh -huh. I, I'm still employed with um, the St. Leo, the great school. And then uh, I make money for my businesses. Okay, let's talk about that. Because you're the director of this uh, St. Leo's, the great Catholic church or church or school, right? Catholic school. It's Catholic school. So In Oakland, California, yes. Yeah, so how do you diverse that from a gospel to a Catholic music? Because you know, they're totally well, different. Well, when I, when I was uh, probably in my early uh, uh -huh. 20s, uh -huh. uh, I also worked for a Catholic church in East St. Louis, Illinois, before oh. I left to come to California. Mm -hmm. So I had some idea of the worship experience and the liturgy. Mm -hmm. And then lo, lo and behold, 20 years later, mm -hmm. here I am being asked to work as the director of music at a Catholic institution. And so what I I teach uh, students from the age of four all the way up to about 13. Wow. And it's a tremendous responsibility uh, yeah. because what you will find is that the, the music that the parents listen to is not necessarily <laughs> what the students listen to. <laughs> so I have uh, to bridge that gap and trying to uh -huh. make it fun for them to learn and, and, and try to make it an, an experience that they were, would remember. Yes, because it's a different world, totally different. It is a different so, world. Yes, yeah. so how do the kids accept it? Do they prefer more into the traditional Catholic music or the gospel? They, they, with they prefer they prefer more uh, into a more contemporary experience. And uh, the, the old liturgy from the Catholic Church, uh, we, don't, we don't embrace it. We uh -huh. embrace whatever the newness is in terms of the liturgy. Yeah, and I'm so proud of you because you also introduced the gospel music in, in Australia, in Europe, because you travel a lot. So what's Absolutely. the difference between the audiences there and the American audiences? Uh, the difference is, is that in the American experiences, in the American experience, many of those persons are used to hearing gospel. Yeah. And see, and seeing it consistently, um, and we absolutely kind of take it for granted. Uh -huh. But in Europe, it uh, it is accepted uh, readily, uh -huh. and gospel artists have been going there since the '30s starting with uh, church, First Church Deliverance out of Chicago, who were responsible mm -hmm. for introducing gospel music to, um, to Europe. Mm -hmm. So it, they're, not, uh, they're not ignorant of the, uh, the genre, but they are very, very much involved in uh, keeping it alive. Mm -hmm. What you discover now is that there are many choirs uh, that have been developed in European countries and both in Australia. And it's, it's, it's a phenomenal experience. Okay, so when you travel, do you have your own choir or you just travel uh, by yourself or? Generally, when I go, I go by myself. I have uh, gone with uh, a group of individuals. Oh. Um, the first trip was with the gospel elites who uh -huh. traveled uh, Europe uh, to Austria and uh, Germany and Italy and uh, Switzerland, and we had to, we headlined it. We headlined concerts in major venues. Uh, in the uh, radio announcer, uh, who recently passed, Emmett Powell, was oh. a great influence on taking many gospel artists uh, uh, around the globe. Mm -hmm. um, what my recent travels have been to um, Spain. To, to oh. Madrid, Spain. And what I've done is taught uh, history uh, regarding the genre. So they will gain a broader understanding of how the music is presented and also how the music has changed over the decades. Oh, I 
but you haven't been to the Asian countries, right? But I heard. No, I haven't been to the yeah. Asian countries yet. Uh -huh. But uh, I look forward to um, one of my uh, one of my best selling songs is a song called "Shout Worthy," and uh, a, a lady out of Japan named Marissa uh, sings it, and uh, it is probably one of the first representations of a uh, a gospel choir. Uh huh primarily African-American, uh -huh. um, pushing uh, with a um, Japanese soloist. Oh, wow. Uh, and it's, and it, was, it was very popular in uh, the New York area in Philadelphia. It's oh, called okay. Shoutworthy, which I'll yeah. probably play, play for you at the very end. <laughs> I can't wait for that one. And I know everybody's wondering, what is she talking about? But yeah. hey, tell us a little bit about your new project. Come on. I'm My so new excited project, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm more excited than you. Trust me, I am. It's called <laughs> Wait. It's called Wait. Wait. And it features uh, some new singers, Aaliyah Hall mm -hmm. and Nate, the soul singer, who is a local pop artist. Yes. Uh, it features uh, Aaliyah singing This Is My Body, which is a surrendering song or a surrendering, surrendering song to God. Mm -hmm. It features also Nate the Soul Singer on uh, Shout Worthy, which we did uh, a kind of house tune with it. We kind of flipped it, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, flipped it. And flipped. Uh, you, you flipped it. We flipped it. You know, it's for the... You know, the, the saints who are leaving the club late at night and then they want to hear a little gospel, <laughs> then they want to dance out the door. This will be yes. your too. Yes, this is your That will be famous in Amsterdam. That's right. That, that'll <laughs> work too. Because <laughs> you know how the church is close to the red light. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and in Chicago, because Chicago has a huge house music, a, a gospel oh. house music following. Yes. And, and before we go, I would like to thank you so much for playing in my mom's uh, fu funeral, actually. I mean, my mom You're died. Welcome. She was such thank a great you so lady. much. Everybody, you know, I, I put a badge of honor on it when I when I tell people that I played it. Yeah, everybody's you know, asking like, about you. Especially other people, Filipinos. They're like, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and the song said, was, thank somebody. you. That the song was thank you, and it was so much for me to thank, thank you, you for being from the bottom friend. of my yeah. heart. Thank you. you thank so, you um, for the opportunity. Thank you, and God bless you, and and uh, and also good luck on your project. But thank I would you love, so much. Thank you. So I want to give a little time for our audience to hear your music. So I would like to say goodbye first, and and I would like to say love, peace, and joy. Thank you yeah. for watching us. <laughs> now, come on, Peabody. Here we Give go. it out.